Hey Matt. What's up, Kai? Hey, dude. I got this cool cold, and I want to shoot expressed. So I did some digging, right? And boy, it's confusing. <laughs> Baffled and flow through and all that stuff, different sizes and muzzle devices, dude. I'm confused. What do you recommend? Well, man, there's quite a lot on the market, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of things. Uh, why don't we talk about baffled versus flow through suppressors? All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Classic Firearms. I'm Matt, and back with me today is Kaya. How's it going, Kaya? Good, man. How are you? All right. Good having you here with me. Yeah, man. Uh, so we have a whole wide world of suppressors to kind of talk about and uh, and what different options there are on the market. What's some of the pros and cons of different things? So uh, I am actually not super experienced with suppressors. So that's one of the great kind of parts of the gun world I'm getting to experience more here at Classic. Yeah. What about you? Same here, dude. I didn't really have much experience with suppressors. Ever since I got to Classic, I got to, I was more exposed so to I, suppressors. You were more exposed. So I uh, I feel that's kind of surprising being you know law enforcement. There, I think there would be kind of an idea that you would have more experience with suppressors. Now throughout my entire career, including the bureau, we just didn't have suppressors on our rifles, and I mean not, obviously not pistols, right? Hmm. Uh, just some of the SWAT guys in the bureau were just starting to get some suppressors. Hmm. Like it's that. Uh, I think budgeting yeah. is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, I think that's really, uh, really surprising, but uh, yeah. that just means we get to learn together because, yeah. uh, you know, again, that's one of the great things about uh, the channel is the opportunity to explore new things and learn new things, and hopefully you guys get to learn some things with us today. Well, why is the small one in front of me? I think this should be over here, and this is probably more you. Whatever you need to compensate, man. I'm uh, just, compensate. Uh. <laughs> so, Whoa. Uh, okay. yeah, so what we have available here is a, a you know, variety of different uh, kind of suppressor options. <clears throat> and we want to talk about why designs for suppressors have changed over time and kind of what makes designs better or worse at certain things than others. Yeah. So the, the main kind of uh, focus is in what we would call baffled suppressors okay. versus flow through suppressors. So, uh, you know, when, it look, when you look at the construction of a traditional suppressor with baffles, uh, you end up with a tube and it's usually got a cap on either end. And inside, uh, there are either stacks of baffles, which are separate shaped plates, mm -hmm. or a monocore. And so a monocore, imagine something that looks kind of like a, a long muzzle brake, and it's got angled surfaces, yeah. so it's all one piece that's been milled out of a solid piece of steel or, or titanium, more likely nowadays. And uh, and those plates or the, the angled surfaces in there create different chambers within the tube for gases to be trapped, expand, have a chance to slow down, and that's what quiets the report. Why do you have fire? multiple baffles in there? Like, um, I, I know it's adjustable, mm -hmm. right? Why is it that way? All right, so when you say it's adjustable, some some suppressors like this one are modular. So you can actually, you can see the top sections add. here are additional baffles yeah. um, that you can add to uh, lengthen it, which might give you more, which gives you more volume. Mm -hmm. um, but not all of them are really modular in that regard. Uh, now, as far as why you have different spaces, again, you know, the, the goal is to trap gas in a way that it will have a chance to slow down, and it is the, the speed at which that gas is escaping, mm -hmm. which creates a lot of that loud report when you're yeah. shooting a firearm. And so by having different chambers, first off, that's more volume that the gas can expand into, but then secondly, uh, I find it interesting because the chambers kind of act like the rings on a gas piston, right? So when you, it. Yeah, when yeah. you fill up one area, it slows gas from moving to the next one down the line. Um, so it, it helps to increase the effectiveness of the suppressor as opposed to just having one large expansion chamber, yeah. right? Yeah, that makes sense, definitely. So flow-through suppressors work <laughs> slightly differently in that there is nothing that's going to stop the gas from moving forward. Instead, there are kind of like a, a labyrinth of passages inside of here where the gas are gonna to continue to expand, but they have to travel a much longer way. Instead of being this long, it's gotta kind of wrap around and around and around until finally it's going to exit these holes at the front. So it slows down significantly. It loses all, all of its energy, basically. Right, so it's it's able to, to continuously expand. It just has to go quite a long way before it's actually released yeah. in the atmosphere, which is what results in the, the quieting of yep. the report. Now. When you compare, <coughs> excuse me. When you compare these two technologies, some of them are better at some things and worse at other things. Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, with a traditional can, one of the things that you have to worry about is the increase in back pressure to the the rest of the firing system. 
Uh, so because gas is being trapped in these chambers, you know, once the bullet leaves, there's kind of a sudden depressurization. The gas can now flow forward, but also the action is going to be opening in the rear and gas can flow back. Yeah. Um, Cause they're all trapped in there basically. Right. So, so you'll have a lot more back pressure with suppressor than otherwise. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. And while the, before the bullet has exited, then this buildup of pressure in here is, is able to act on the gas system of the firearm, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, it's, it's putting more pressure through your gas tube or onto your gas piston and that will accelerate the speed at which your, your bolt or bolt carrier is moving. And this can have some negative effects. So, you know, it's moving the parts inside your gun much more violently. So this can cause additional wear. Yeah. Um, it can cause a, a, you know, change in perceived recoil. Uh, your gun could be overgassed. So for instance, you know, uh, normally we talk about like say the AR-15, yeah. we're looking for that kind of uh, three o'clock you know, mm -hmm. ejection. Well, if it's now overgassed, you know, it could be ejecting like one forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there is gas coming out of the action of the gun into the shooter's face. This can cause your eyes to tear up. Yep. Uh, you get kind of a nose full of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's a variety of, of issues that happen due to the fact that it's overgassed. And in fact, it can cause your firearm to start to misfunction so that's when you want to adjust your gap if hopefully you got the uh, piston or oh, adjustable gas block where right. you can actually adjust your gas system right so you can then tune your rifle yeah. to work with that higher pressure mm -hmm. so that's where your adjustable gas block comes in effectively you're choking off gas yeah uh, you could get a heavier buffer spring so it takes longer for the action to open uh, a heavier buffer weight yeah. you know uh, you could get you know, a suppressor specific kind of a bolt carrier. Uh, there's charging handles that have ports to gas, the, kind to of vent the gas. to, yeah, either side. Yep. yep. Um, so there's, there's <clears throat> different parts that you can then go in and replace to tune that rifle to work suppressed. Part of the problem with that is that if you tune it to work with your suppressor, then it may not function without it. At that point, you're not getting enough gas. That's right, yep. Uh, or, you know, the, the bolt, the buffer weight, the buffer spring, they're too heavy without the additional pressure from the suppressor. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not a kind of a one-time fix because it's also gonna depend on what ammunition you're using. If you're shooting supersonic, then it's gonna be yeah. a different than if you're using subsonic ammunition. And you have to kind of continuously tune and retune the, the system in order to get it to run properly with the, the traditional baffled suppressor. Yeah, we were shooting the uh, CMG Descent mm -hmm. 300 Blackout uh, suppressed with just regular rounds, right? Mm -hmm. And it was working perfectly. And as soon as we start to shoot the 300 blackout subsonic, mm -hmm. and it would just not cycle. Right. So it's gonna have that lower pressure because yeah. the subsonic rounds are trying to achieve a slower velocity. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you know, you might, if you have adjustable gas, you might take it off suppress and put it onto just regular gas setting. So you get enough back pressure right. to cycle, yeah. Um, now with the flow through, the, I, the yeah, one of the goals is to, yeah. is to eliminate that need to tune the firearm. Um, so because the gas is always moving forward, you don't have that increase in back pressure. And therefore, you, the goal is, one of the goals is to have zero impact on the operation of the firearm platform itself. Um, you know, so again, everything's moving forward, continuously able to expand until it exits these vents at the top, or, or should say front. Yeah. And therefore, you eliminate the cost of those parts and the time it takes in order to you know, tune the rifle to a suppressed setting you can just pop this on and should be able to shoot it just like if it was unsuppressed. How, how's it, I wonder, uh, how's the sound of flow through technology versus baffle? Okay, so that's I'm actually curious. a really good point. Yeah. So baffle technology is gonna be quieter at the muzzle than flow through because flow through still has those gases escaping mm -hmm. forward. Um, however, depending on what your goal is, you know, the, the decibel level at the muzzle isn't really what we're concerned with, right? Yeah. What we're concerned with is usually decibel to the shooter, right? To the shooter's ear. Mm -hmm. um, and then also possibly in yeah. the area around us. So for the flow through technology, you are gonna have a higher decibel level at the muzzle, mm -hmm. but at the shooter's ear, it's going to be equivalent to a baffled suppressor. Now, this is gonna act somewhat like an inline comp in that it is forcing those gases forward, which is why you're not getting the extra sound at the shooter's location. Um, depending on where an observer is, it could be that they're going to still have a louder rapport than with a, a baffle cap. Baffle, yeah. But you know, if someone is, is off to the side, then you know, hopefully most of that is going forward and they're also gonna benefit from a, a reduction of, of sound. What about muzzle flash? 
So all of them are really good at, at helping with muzzle flash. So okay. these gases are, are slowed way down. Um, so you're, you're getting rid of that initial flash, which a lot of it comes from unburned powder anyway. This mm -hmm. is, the gases are trapped and held or just have to move long <laughs> enough that you know, you're not gonna expect to see muzzle flash with, with any of these silencers. Gotcha. Now, uh, you know, again, when you look at the baffled suppressor and we talk about getting that gas to the face, so there have been some scientific studies done, uh, especially by one of the manufacturers, Huxworks, where they wanted to know the effect of these gases on the shooter. Because if you are in a professional environment, this is your job, then you're gonna be repeatedly exposed for years, possibly, <laughs> to all of these gases. So you think about this, like, Anybody who shoots suppressed, they'll probably understand this. And ever since I got the classic, just mm -hmm. like you too, I've been shooting a lot more suppressed than I did before. And you shoot like one or two mags, mm -hmm. and you can't breathe. Right. Like just yesterday, we were at the range. We were just doing a review on an optic, and I was just dumping some rounds on a 5.56. And after my second magazine, I was just I couldn't breathe. Yeah. Like your eyes are burning. You're just taking that thing in. So if that's your job, it, it is my job here. Thank God we're not doing it all the time. But if that's your job, testing these things, whatever, whew, man, right. you probably there's got to be some health risks. Right. So you have yeah. you have uh, I think it was three main gases, and we're gonna put up some uh, yeah. some some graphics to help explain this mm -hmm. because uh, obviously the the medical specific terminology yeah. isn't something that I'm expert in. But uh, your exposure to them is greatly increased due to the fact that the silencer is forcing that gas back mm -hmm. to you with a traditional can. Uh, with the flow through can, you effectively eliminate any increase in your your exposure to these these gases because the gases in are able to flow forward and exit. Increase your exposure increase? No, no. So with the flow through, oh. you, there's no increase. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, effectively, it's the same as shooting the unsuppressed gotcha. because those gases are flowing forward just like they would exiting at the muzzle end, Makes just sense. like they would out of an unsuppressed firearm, um, which is one of the reasons why, you know, it you know, silencers or suppressors are considered to be a safety device, right? So it's saving our hearing. And in this case, with the flow through technology, it's actually helping to avoid exposure to those chemicals, which yeah. could have long term serious consequences if you have a lot of exposure yeah. to them. Um, and then also cleaning your firearm. So, cleaning obviously is important, mm -hmm. keeping things uh, inside your firearm clean. Uh, and the traditional baffle cans, unfortunately, due to that gas coming back into the operating system, it's bringing carbon fouling, possibly oh, yeah, lead, that's right. copper. That's right. yeah. uh, it's bringing those things back into the action of the gun. Uh, you know, with a traditional baffle can, you'll frequently see that even if you shoot a couple rounds and yeah. take your mag out, that the top rounds of ammunition That's right. will have blackened with carbon. Uh, so another benefit of the flow through technology is that you're keeping that fouling from coming back into your action and possibly causing a malfunction. Yeah. Or, you know, again, just maybe increasing your exposure to lead because that lead dust is going to come back and cover everything. Um, so, so those are some advantages of the flow through technology in Keeping those gases moving forward, you're eliminating the extra mm -hmm. you know, wear and tear on your gun, eliminating needing to kind of tune your gun. Uh, gases obviously in your face. Yep, take the gas out of your face, both as a uh, something that would affect you as a shooter, but also long-term health consequences. Yeah. And then also due to the fact that uh, you know there is a flow through uh, of all those gases and it's not bringing the the you know trash back to you. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are you know again a lot of very small. Uh, channel ways through here that mm -hmm. it's following and it deposits that material in the silencer which does mean that uh, you have to service the silencer probably more often than a traditional baffle can okay hey look at that oh look so uh, this, is the inside this cutaway is actually a great uh, <laughs> great demonstration so uh, <clears throat> you know here is a cutaway of a Huxwork safety company silencer and you can see in here that all of these things are, are little channel ways and they don't ever dead end but they kind of twist and wrap around and so you're just greatly expanding now all oh. of these little tiny channels are going to be you know have deposits of lead copper and carbon so it makes perfect sense so if because they're so small and right. so little right here so if if the carbon is built up over here mm -hmm. it's going to be blocked or just changes the characteristics of airflow or the gas right flow, as it right? builds up you're going to have a, a de depreciating effect yep. right so it's going makes to sense. be less effective at you know, providing the, the reduction of noise uh, because more and more gas is going to be forced to follow the bullet down the main just, channel. Just like an airplane wing. When it's iced up, yeah. you know, you got to de-ice that. That's what they, they do. Okay, that uh, makes sense. Because airflow over the wings or below the wings, obviously high pressure, low pressure. Mm -hmm. The plane cannot take oh, off. Low pressure, high pressure. Yes. 
Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. So it really does. That's why they it makes sense to me now because I know that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, these cans are are one unit, right? They are not uh, disassemblable, which is in itself kind of a, a disadvantage. You know, most of these cans they can be disassembled at least to a certain degree. Right? You can remove the cap on the end. You can remove the cap on the bottom. Uh, these are one unit. So the way that you have to service these is soaking them in a solvent. Uh, yeah. There's a couple recommendations that I've heard, uh, Slip 2000 or CLP. Uh, Wasn't Slip 2000 your uh, nickname in college? Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, so they have a <laughs> soak and shoot method that they recommend. You would soak this overnight in uh, in something that's going oh, yeah, to that be a, a solvent for lead and copper. And then you can shoot it. Uh, you can obviously see if things have dissolved out of it into the solvent. And then when you shoot it, you know, uh, you will be blowing all of the, the excess chemical out. And again, it's going to exit in front of you. It's not going to come back to you as a shooter. Uh, so you'll be able to, uh, to clear out all of the excess chemical that's in here. Now, uh, one thing that was interesting, I thought, was that you can actually weigh your silencer to determine when it needs to be cleaned. So that's, if you take a, a way, yeah. if you take a, a fresh weight when you just got, you know, just purchased the silencer or after it's just been cleaned, mm -hmm. And say you go out and you go to the range two times and you're starting to wonder, okay, does this need to be cleaned? Yeah. If you weigh it, uh, the idea is that you should not let it get to be heavier than about an ounce heavier than the, the original weight. That's pretty cool, actually. That's yeah. really... So wow. that works out to, I don't know, 18 to, uh, 1,800 to 2,000 rounds-ish uh, is what they recommend. Yeah. Um, but again, so, you know, being that it's, it's one piece, you cannot disassemble it. Uh, you know, obviously for handgun yeah. silencers, usually they're completely disassembled. You can pull a monocore right yeah. out of it. Uh, but even rifle suppressors that are baffled, usually you can at least do a partial disassembly in order to surface it. Um, so that's that's one. Uh, and another one is that historically they haven't worked really well with low pressure cartridges. So when you think about handgun ammunition or subsonic rifle ammunition, uh, you know that all that pressure is coming out the end, yeah. and the round is providing less pressure to cycle the action. Yeah. So it does make sense because it's trapping all those things. It's flow through, so the gases are obviously escaping. It's not being trapped in there to create that back pressure, mm -hmm. and the round itself is already a very low pressure round. Right. So, yeah. So, sense. so they have historically had some issues with that. I know that they have been working and are continuing to work on. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in some of our testing, they Pretty do cool. cycle, uh, you know, with subsonic ammunition, but it's still not necessarily where it it needs to be when it comes like to that. Reliable. Right. So, yeah. you know, uh, but that, that's something that with improving technology uh, and design that they are working on in order to get that to be much more reliable with like those subsonic rounds. Because obviously if you're shooting suppressed, there's a good chance that you want to use subsonic oh, yeah. rounds. If you're using something like uh, the Cash 9K pistol, nine millimeter can, you're going to want to use nine millimeter yeah. and nine millimeters, a pistol cartridge is already lower pressure. Um, in fact, one of the things that's interesting about baffle cans is some cans are kind of adaptable and some are mission specific. And that goes, I guess, for all silencers, but specifically yeah. the two we're looking at here are baffled cans. So this has, you know, added baffles uh, that yeah. you can add. Um, and this one is kind of a, a dedicated subsonic ammunition design suppressor. It's designed to have the maximum amount of, uh, of sound mitigation with subsonic rounds. So this is a, a Surefire. Um, but because they're designed specifically with those subsonic rounds in mind, then, you know, you have to, you know, understand that it's going to create an extreme amount of pressure. Uh, again, we talked about those cycling issues yeah. with like supersonic ammunition, like standard ammunition. Yeah. Um, we also just kind of had a lineup of some of the, almost you can see the history here of, well, let me switch things back around the way they were. Kind of some of the history of development of, of suppressors. So like this one, for instance, is uh, from Sully Arms and it's kind of cool because it looks really retro. It looks kind of like the uh, AEM-5 yeah. from like the Mark 12. Um, and then we can kind of see how things progress. This is direct thread. Uh, one of the problems with solely direct thread is that under you know the change in temperature and, and kind of the motion of shooting, mm -hmm. this can, can start to get loose, right? So we went to kind of this lock and collar design, oh, QD, yeah. right? So that's really cool. Um, and then as we move forward, you know, we start to get to things that uh, you know will require the use of certain muzzle devices or at mm -hmm. least one of several muzzle devices that are options out there. Um, so you don't have to worry about removing your muzzle device, just goes right over it and right, right on, good to go. And one of the things that I think they did that's really cool with the flow suppressors is uh, that all of the vents on the end are, are canted to kind of torque it every time. So this yeah. does thread to a, a, a cool, muzzle man. device. Um, and there's no locking system, but every time you fire, it kind of gives it a little bit Give of a pressure, like a jet, yeah. right? To just retorque it. So, you know, again, just going through, 
Uh, obviously, suppressor technology, one of the things that's really cool is our advancements in the ability to manufacture things. Yeah. So you can now, again, so 3D print or additive manufacture, which gives you the option of doing things that would be much harder if you were trying to use a, a normal like yeah. seven axis mill and machine out the, the hollows inside. Yeah. Um, all the way back to kind of like, you know, original just tube, tube. Yeah, so with the uh, flow through, this is titanium you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming because this is this new technology, again, I don't know what, how the manufacturing process is, titanium is obviously more expensive. So any what, what's the prices like when it comes to baffles and uh, flow throughs? So that is a great question because yeah. that is a real question that affects people out there in the market, yeah. right? So when it comes to this new technology, you are paying for new technology. And okay. you know, new technology is one of those things where uh, it's, it's not inexpensive at first. Usually things go yeah. into development, they come out, they're gonna be the most expensive. And then over time, we figure out ways to make that technology cheaper. So, you know, when you look at a flow through silencer, uh, it is not the least expensive silencer on the market. Gotcha. But you do have to think about the fact that you can avoid any extra costs. So uh, by purchasing a flow through suppressor, you are avoiding any of those costs for tuning. You're avoiding replacing your bolt carrier, your gas block, your, you know, the time it takes for you to take it home, tinker with it, go back out to the range, test it again until you get it dialed in. Yeah, dude, I, I agree. And, and uh, just the gas not coming to you, obviously, mm -hmm. the flow through technology, you still get that quiet, nice thing, but you don't have and to really do And the health benefits. Health, the exactly. health benefits. Health benefits, and you still, and you don't have to mess with your gun. Right. For me, you, right there, I would spend, personally, I'd spend the extra money uh, for a technology like that. Plus, it's one piece, yep. less points of failure. That, I mean, that's a, a valid point, you yeah. know, uh, that the simplicity of this design, yeah. uh, not in its, its design elements. Again, I'm sure that that's very complicated. If you look at, at, at this again, yeah. I mean, that's not simple geometry, insane, but yeah. the, the simplicity of the user experience yeah. is fantastic on that. All right, Matt, phenomenal explanation. I learned a bunch of things in mm -hmm. the last few minutes. However, I've got one more question for you. My cool Colt, what if this was fully automatic? It's not. But what if it was? What if? What okay. If exactly. So, so, so I mean, a full auto firearm is going to exacerbate a lot of the issues we've already talked about, right? Yeah. So you already have the action cycling very fast. Yeah. Um, so additional back pressure is going to make it go even faster. In fact, I would almost be willing to bet you would experience a cyclic rate change on your full auto. Um, but that does carry with it the fact that you're going to be you know, putting the extra wear and tear on the parts as well as putting you know all the fouling into the system. Uh, so. The, the flow through can, uh, it does have the disadvantage that it heats up faster. So I can definitely mm -hmm. imagine, you know, with all of, yeah, the, the little chambers and things in here, you have a lot of surface area that's being exposed to those hot expanding gases. Um, so it heats up faster, but the fact that it has all that surface area does also mean that it cools down faster because it's gotcha. like a radiator, right? Yeah. Um, so it kind of depends on whether you think that, uh, it's a determining factor to have a can that will heat up faster, yeah. um, but then cool down faster, or one that maybe will heat up slower, but then it holds on that heat for longer. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure that there's a, a right answer there. Yeah. You know, this one may require you to possibly, you know, stop firing first because of the, how hot this is getting. Yeah. But on the other hand, you know, that's gonna cool off and you're gonna be able to handle it uh, as opposed to something that maybe once it gets hot and you stop shooting, it's going to continue to get stay hot, hot for and stay hot for a while. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know I mean, that, you know, it's just different. And that way, you know, everyone can make an informed decision when they're yeah. in the market and uh, and yeah. So I don't know, again, I had a lot of fun looking into some of the information about this, uh, getting to learn a little bit more. I'm looking forward to maybe getting to shoot some of these suppressors yeah. at the range. Oh. You want to do that? Because I'll never say no to shooting guns. I mean, yeah, I would love to, uh, you know, as we get out to the range, be able to, to try out some of these suppressors a little bit more often. And guys, if you're at home and you have more experience with suppressors, yeah. you know, feel free, leave us a comment if you think that there's one thing that's definitively better about one thing than the other, or if, you know, you have one of the, the you know, Huxwork suppressors, or, you know, you have one of the Silencer Coast suppressors or Surefire suppressors, you know, give us some of your opinions. What do you think makes for a good suppressor and why? I mean, I, I'd always be willing to learn more information from people who have the experience. Yeah, what I'm curious about the comment section is, which one would you pick? Would you pick a suppressor that heats up real fast or heats up faster, let's just say, and cools off mm -hmm. like uh, quicker, like Huxworks? Or would you want something that heats up slower, but yet 
holds on to that heat longer. I'm curious about that. I'm curious to see what comment section thinks right. about that. And guys, see don't forget, we always have cool things going off on CF Contest. Uh, make sure you go over there and check that out. Um, but yeah, I think until next time, we, uh, we're we gonna sign off for now. So yeah. Kaya? That's, that's it, yeah, cfcontest.com for sure. Really cool things happen there. And looks like we're gonna be hitting the range sometime very soon, because you told and you can't back up. We're gonna shoot some express guns. But until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, guys. God bless. Yeah.